with love and humility, I offer myself at the divine lotus feet of our dearest, loving, omnipresent Lord Bhagavan Sri Sachi Sai Baba. Dear brothers and sisters, good morning and salute to you. Most of you might have heard Mrs. Subhrashmi, she got the Bharatratna Award and um, for her singing, she was a great devotee of Swami. It is beautiful to see the divine romance, the interaction between a devotee and God. So we were, used to enjoy and she was in the audience one day and Swami said, come and give a talk, come and give a talk. She said, no Swami, I'm a singer, I cannot talk. But Swami said, again, talk. So she, Swami insisted that she said, follow the divine command. She came to the stage and she said, Swami in Tamil, you are my mother, Swami, you are my father, you are my guru, you are my friend, you are my God, you are my all in all. And then Jay Sairam and she went and slapped. <laughs> and Swami went on clapping. Swami said, this is the best speech I ever heard. <laughs> so, Swami is Bhava Priya. What he looks, what really our feeling is not, you don't need to be a platform heroes, but really, what really we mean, the connection between heart to heart with God. So yesterday we had uh, study circle and love and we had study guides and uh, uh, we talked at length about love and what is divine love and uh, how to love, how to nurture love, what are the obstacles of love, what are the examples of love and what are the signs that we live in love. But as Swami says, love cannot be in words, love needs to be translated into action. Otherwise, love is no love. I remember this is another wonderful incident I remember about Professor Kasturi. Professor Kasturi was relating, so he was going in the village, this was many years ago, and there was a zamindar, zamindar which is a law and law, a very wealthy man. He lost all his money and he was just eating some peanuts. So this man was moved. My God, such a rich man, now just he had to live in peanuts. So he came and told Swami, Swami such and such person, a wealthy man now, he lost everything, he's living on peanuts. And Swami scolded uh, Professor Kasturi. He thought Swami will uh, appreciate his kind heart, that you are moved to think. Swami scolded him, what kind of man you are? Swami, what should I do? When somebody is like that, you should have given him some jaggery, some brown sugar along with peanuts, he could eat, because that tastes better. So you should have... So don't give lip sympathy, oh what a wonder, what did you do about it? Similarly, a lot of times we hear the tragedies, various things, what did we really do about it? So love should be in action, that's what uh, Swami said. And we always, Swami used to say, wherever my glory has sung, I manifest. And in the last few decades, he said, wherever my work is done, I am manifest. So we should remember, it's not only repeating his name, doing his work. Swami gives the greatest example of Hanuman and the Vibhishana. He was always chanting Rama's name, but he was wondering how Hanuman is so close to Rama compared to him. He asked, what is the secret? He says, you just repeat God's name, but you don't do God's work. Not only repeat God's name, but you should do God's work if you want to be near and dear to God. Really, wherever Swami's work is there, He is manifest. I can relate to you a couple of incidents. When I was there for the pre-world conference in Hong Kong a few weeks ago, the youth were presenting program and then they were talking, they went for this uh, downtown where the homeless service they were uh, doing and they paid Swami give a sign that you are there. And then, suddenly from nowhere, there is a car which goes with a license plate, Shivoham, I am Shiva. So the, for, the, for the youth, there was a sign that Swami was there. And similarly, when I was in St. Petersburg, Russia, they were doing a service project, and they were also asking Swami, always we want some Swami to show his sign, and they say, pray to Swami, and they were doing the vegetables, cutting, suddenly there is a vegetable, I took a picture of that. 
just potato which looks just like exactly like a heart love so swami was showing the presence i am here and yesterday you heard somebody was telling how they wanted to do the service the rain stops so wherever his work is done is manifest so that is why what did swami say we said god is love love is god but the best way to love god is we all know these formulas mahavakyas is by loving god and serving god he didn't say love some people love all <laughs> because you cannot love some human some not some animals love all that means everything is him whether it is a human plants animals and swami is the example we should love all and serve all so not some people serve all so we should dive deep and really practice uh, the teachings as in the scriptures it is said swami is saying jantu naam narajanma durlabham the pinnacle of creation is human birth there are 8.2 million species of beings in this universe the pinnacle of creation is human birth this is the divine gift divine grace we are all humans but the second sign of divine grace is to have hunger for god longing for god or hunger for truth because there are 7.2 billion people on this planet earth how many people are interested to know the truth the very fact that we are all here and a weekend singing his glory is talking about him shows there is a divine grace that we are here to think about him there is a special sign of divine grace to have this longing for god third sign of divine grace is come in contact with the great master great teacher like ramakrishna paramahamsa nisargadatta maharaj ramana maharshi great soul because like anything else in spiritual life you need a guide and but here we are blessed and fortunate we have the guru of gurus teacher of the teachers lord of the lords the supreme lord being our guide guru and everything so we are most blessed these are the special signs of grace to be born as human being to have love for god and have contact with the great soul and we have the contact with the supreme soul but the fourth the highest sign of divine grace is what to be able to work for god to be in the divine mission that's why to be able to work for god is the last stage if you really sincerely god many are called jesus said few are chosen we are all chosen to do his work so we should grab this opportunity this opportunity to serve you never know when it again the opportunity comes when it comes we should grab the opportunity and there are many sai workers working day and night i know i saw a lot of you do this wonderful uh, service and god himself gives the example how could we grab the opportunity to serve i can share some like lord krishna when dharmaraja was doing the yajna just to as a propitiatory right then he invites everybody everybody takes a task like here we have arranged this conference somebody is doing registration somebody dining somebody is taking care of the guests somebody the venue similarly in that such a huge yajna they are doing dharmaraja everybody took responsibility and lord krishna was the presiding guest so he comes what about me give me some responsibility he said no sir just your very presence swami is enough for us that itself is we don't need anything for you to do just be there your blessings is your gift to us no no i want to do something and then he didn't give which is is anybody taking the plates of the guests after they eat so he chose this task of taking the leaf plates of the guests after they eat this is what lord krishna chose to do to set an example same thing jesus in the last day of supper what did he do he washed the feet of his disciples to, to set an example how we should serve the lord and how we should serve each other so he chose always we should look for the opportunity and a lot of you might have heard from sister geeta ram how swami was an example when the akanda bhajans were being conducted those days in the beginning in bangalore and swami very discreetly he went to see how the arrangements are everybody was busy 
And then Swami came and everybody said, where is Swami? They are looking for him. He was there outside making sure the shoes are kept in an order. People were, you know, when they are coming in a rush, we put shoes here and there. He, want, she, he was making sure the shoes were put in order. That is the example Swami is showing always. Try to grab the opportunities to do the service. And another thing yesterday, one of our brothers were asking, oh, some people, they don't have an opportunity to serve. If you have a desire, God will provide the opportunity. Example is Hanuman. Hanuman, you know, he was so close to Lord Rama. And then after the coronation, everybody distributed responsibility. So they were jealous, other people. You know, Swami says, God is omnipresent, jealousy is also omnipresent. <laughs> so sometimes it happens among devotees too. So they were thinking this, Hanuman always gets opportunity to be close to Rama. So his brothers, everybody planned. They divided all the responsibilities. There is nothing left behind for Hanuma. So they said, what can I do? He says, we all taken, there is nothing for you, just be there. Then he says, okay, he asks, because God gives the idea if you have sincere desire. Did anybody take the responsibility of snapping the fingers? The tradition was, if whenever somebody yawns, you snap the finger. So that is the tradition for a king. If you yawn, you need to snap the finger. So he said, nobody told. Okay, I will take the responsibility. Because you never know when you yawn. So that means he's there with all the time. So I don't know. He doesn't say when he's going to yawn. So he may yawn any time. So he's there next to him all the time, ready to snap. So you need to have that hunger, how to serve the Lord. I remember this 1994. As I said, me and my wife were blessed and fortunate to be invited uh, to be with Swami as his guest. There was a blissful experience. As you said, you spend morning to night with Swami. So, many experiences. So, that time, one day suddenly Swami said, Narendra, I want to go for a ride. Can you take me for drive? I said, Swami, I don't have international driver's license. <laughs> And then I lost, then suddenly within a minute I realized my mistake. That God is giving the license, why do I need an international driver's license? <laughs> so I, I suddenly realized by that time my chance is gone. Somebody else he already asked to take for the drive. Then I told Haima, she said, you always use your head, you should use your heart. That's, that's why they say, wife, W-I-F, wisdom invited forever. <laughs> So listen to the wise. So if they take you on the right path, otherwise if they take you on the wrong path, it could be worries in my head forever. <laughs> so, so then I listen. Then a few days later, Swami took us for a picnic. Beautiful place where there was waterfall, gardens, everything was there. So he took for a picnic, and I was just behind Swami. I was walking, and uh, there was a lady who was carrying fine wood on her head. And you know, Swami's heart goes out. He wanted to give some money, 100 rupees. Swami looked back, Narendra, can you give me 100 rupees? You see, I have a robe, I have no pockets, no money. <laughs> so I was like, Swami, what a joy. Just I right away took the 100 rupees and gave, and Swami gave it to the woman. So picnic is over, we had nice, Swami was singing, we were singing, we had uh, picnic party. So after the whole thing is over, so we went back to the uh, Sai Shruti, that is the house of Swami in Kodakana. So we were with Swami and we were having evening uh, dinner. And suddenly Swami says, Narendra, come. I went to his divine lotus feet, prayed. Swami took 500 rupee note and uh, was giving to me. This is your money. So, no, Swami, please, please forgive me if I did anything wrong. So that is your money, I gave your money. I, what do I, everything belongs to you, this body, my well, power, everything belongs to you. Please forgive me if I have wrong thoughts. So please, Swami, don't give that. Swami insisted. Then again, again, I refused. This went on for a few times. Then Swami said, if you don't take it, I won't talk to you. Then I said, give it, give it, Swami. <laughs> so because we want, we don't want to uh, uh, lose the interaction. So he gave it. So that 500 rupees, I want to show this. I really keep it like a facade. <laughs> So then I told Swami, this is a good business. I gave 100 rupees to you. <laughs> you did 
we didn't, we didn't couple of hours, he multiplied by five. So, doing business, this is a lesson. Whatever we do for God, it comes back to us many more fold. Swami said, you take one step, I will take come hundred steps. You shed one tear for me, I will wipe hundreds of tears. It is a blessing to be able to work for God. And he assured us, if you do my work, I will take care of you, your family, your community, everything. He assured us we should have that. I remember this one of our friends and relatives. She's from a place called Madanapalli. Swami used to go from Puttaparthi to Madras those days via car, on car via this place called Madanapalli. Just on the way, Swami has to have lunch and she provided lunch for him that day because she had been away. And see Swami's love. Rest of her life, whenever she is in Prashantinlayam, Swami provided free food and free accommodation for her. That's why Swami says, if you give little thing to God, we don't do that way, but we should have that spirit. We should always look for the opportunity, grab the opportunity to do service. Then what is service? We always talk about as a service. Service is love in action. We all know whenever we think of service, we want to provide food for the needy, clothes for the needy, we want political medical uh, relief, shelter, and our organization with Swami's blessing and grace has been doing this in 126 countries. Like in Haiti, after the earthquake uh, in January 2010, till today we have been doing this service, doing Nara and Seva. This is the only NGO recognized by the Haiti in one of the best to do sustainable service over the course of five years. It was recognized for that. And now in Philippines, like in uh, November 2013, we had big typhoon Haiyan. Right after that, our uh, volunteers went there and started the relief activities. Now we have provided medical camps, dental camps. Some of the audience are there. Hari Kanjivaram was there, Mahesh Gayal and uh, Ravi Dabir, few other uh, people. And then this, our friend Bob Singh is there. He was the anchor man. He spent twice, he, went, he spent twice as an anchor man. Many people from USA and different parts of the world are taking active part in providing this mental, dental and medical relief. And also we reconstructed some classrooms. Actually we sent a bulletin regarding this. We inaugurated some classes, uh, classrooms, school buildings, providing the school supplies. And they were so grateful, particularly a maternity clinic in the place called Dura, right, Mark Singh. So we started, these women were having children on the streets. So we provided just not a fancy place, little place where they can have the delivery of the children in the sterile environment. So the mayor, they were all so grateful and had these little acts of kindness go a long way. That's why Jesus said, we do to the least of your brother, you are doing it to me. So whenever we do that, Swami says, loving God is by loving God, serving God. This is the opportunities. But we should not think that only by giving food and shelter, clothes and medicine is the only service. Swami said, just a smile, it is a service. So you may make, anybody you make somebody happy, that is a service. You give a nice pat about somebody doing good work, that is a service you make happy. Your kind word, that is also a service. That makes a long way. So Swami says, don't worry, be happy. I can tell you a personal anecdote. This happened about many years ago. I'm an endocrinologist, take care of the thyroid problems. So one time one of my patients, I have many patients with thyroid disease, hyperthyroid, overactive thyroid came. So I looked at her laboratory work. They were all out of whack, completely abnormal. I said, uh, what is happening? Are you taking the medicine? She says, I am taking the medicine. Then what is the problem? I am going through a lot of stress. My mother is dying of cancer. She is in the hospice program. She went on talking. So I counseled her, don't worry. And at the end, I told her, don't worry, be happy. 
like the song we were talking about. And then she didn't show up for six months. I thought she's upset with me. She says, when she's telling us, I said, don't worry, be happy. So after six months, she comes back and uh, said, uh, such and such, what's happened? So since she brought a cap, hat, embroider, don't worry, be happy. <laughs> she said, doctor, lady, you told that day, don't worry, be happy. And I went back, I told my mother, the whole conversation, that lady said, don't worry, be happy, mom. So that lady was so much touched by that, she took a project, she was embroidering the hats, don't worry, be happy, distributing to the other inmates of the hospice as a project and giving it, and told her daughter that she was dying, because she died, so give this, take this project, give it to the people in terminal illness. So she gave it to show me, as a present. So how just some words can make a big impact. So kind words also is a great service. Smile is a service. Pat is a service. And fourth thing is prayer is a great service. So sometimes you not be able to go and do something. Just pray for the highest good of all. That is why Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavantu. Every time you chant, that is a service. Because so that the whole world, everybody is happy. This happened, I think, a couple of years ago when there was a big uh, hurricane was coming in Andhra Pradesh. I, I sent a notice to a lot of you that it was coming in 300 kilometers speed and going to destroy a lot of parts of Andhra Pradesh. I, we requested everybody please pray for that. Amazing that 300 kilometer thing became 50 kilometers and no damage was done. The power of prayer and then one of the senior devotees as the meteoro meteorologist, what happened, what happened? We don't know what happened. So this is the power of prayer can do a lot of things. And also the bhajans, like you are doing the bhajans when you transport somebody into the divine experience, that is a great service. Sometimes singing bhajans is a great service, sometimes not singing also. Sometimes <laughs> doing certain things is also a service. <laughs> I remember this is many years ago, my son in life is here, Vijay. So he was just new to Swami, was introduced, he went for a center in Detroit, and they were passing on the mic to Bajans, and so they gave the mic to him, and he been, then he showed them the thing. If you don't know how to sing well, Bajans not singing is a service. So he said, I don't want to, he just showed them. So sometimes not doing certain things which are not good, that is also a service. <laughs> So, but anyway, the surprise, after two years, Swami made him sing in uh, uh, Vrindavan and he sang Manasa Bhajire, so that is uh, besides. So whatever we do, we do with that thing, it becomes uh, service. And even talking about God, making somebody, bringing closer to God, that would be the greatest service. Just talking about God, making somebody relate, bringing somebody to God, that is the greatest service. I can relate to one of our good uh, uncles, uh, his Gopal Rao. Some of you might know him, he was the chairman of Andhra Bank. And he's such a great devotee, he's, he's lived till 100 years. Swami celebrated his 100th birthday in the Kulwant Hall in a grand scale in front of everybody. Some might, might have witnessed, it was in a Guru Purnima. Anybody was there? Some, yeah, you were there. So a lot of us was there. It was a beautiful celebration how Swami gave it with so much uh, joy and blessing him. And this man is a wonderful devotee, so he used to always look for opportunity to service. But as he became old, about 85, 90, so he could not do much big work. Then he said, Swami, what can I do? He said, go and give uh, water in the canteen. So they used to take him in a car, take to the canteen, and there almost somebody has to hold his hand as he goes. <laughs> but his desire to serve, that's why Swami himself talked about this. This man has that burning desire, how can I serve the Lord? So then finally a stage came, he couldn't even do that because he could not go, he's so weak. Then he said, he still wants to serve. He asked Swami, what can I do, Swami? I want to serve you. Then he says, talk about me. Talk about your experiences. That is a service. So doing that also is a service, talking about the glory of God. So all this is service. So but 
don't equate only doing this service knowing who we are there is also a service i remember this is about 20 years ago swami gave a series of talks on shirdi side about his previous incarnation in telugu at that time those were not translated into english so being my mother tongue being telugu i wanted to translate into english so i told swami i want to translate your discourses on shirdi baba into english why you want to do that i said swami that would be great service so many people will learn about you i think that's really doing service to the that is not a service then what is swami swami what should i do know who you are that is the greatest service so then i said swami that's very hard self inquiry all this very hard swami says no so he says give a beautiful example a cave may be dark for thousands of years the minute you put a candle the darkness is gone so how long does it take for the darkness to go does it doesn't take thousand years instantly the darkness is gone similarly if you have intense longing with the divine grace and your sincere effort self inquiry in a flash you could be enlightened so the really the great service is know thyself know who you are then everything is true so this is service different angle what service is so don't identify only doing food clothing there is all service but different every anything which helps in the divine mission is a service then how could the attitude we have to service swami said when you want to serve the attitude should be we are serving god we are not serving somebody else then only that's why swami introduced the word narayana seva it is serving god you are not serving anybody else that is the attitude with which you should have that in that swami says god is interested in quality not quantity i remember one time i was in our arcade center we used to have only 10 15 members so after a few years it came to 50 to 60 so i was going with some time and swami said how is your center swami it used to be 5 10 people now we have 50 to 60 people so i like swami said you know what a great this is all you learn from me swami is not interested in qualities a quantity swami interested in quality handful of good people that's all what it is interested and swami gives the example of lord rama when shabari she gave the gave the tasted fruit he took it to the relish because she did it out of love and same thing lord krishna when he was invited with palm and lot of respect by duryodhana he didn't go he went to the uh, vidura's house who gave it humility reception and what did vidura give when he was went to his house he was giving bananas he was doing peeling giving the peels of the bananas instead of the palm he was so much god intoxicated he forgot what he was giving he was giving the peels of the bananas and lord krishna was eating with relish because lord looks at what our heart is and you also know the story of this boy who gave 100 rupees for swami's hospital right and how swami was more touched by that 100 rupee note land millions of dollars which are given by donors for the hospital does everybody know the story yes, yes. no no okay i will relate to that because i was witness to that and we were there in the veranda some of our guests are here also probably witness that so there was a boy in an envelope he gave something to swami swami went into the interview room and comes back with this 100 rupee note and this boy was embarrassed he didn't want anybody to know so he was showing people around see this 100 rupees and we didn't know what the significance is then he told that boy to come was anybody there so there were two other people we were there in the veranda below we were there so and then swami said told the boy to come he says this boy wrote in the letter swami please use this 100 rupees for your hospital and swami was so much touched so this boy used to get money pocket money from his parents for his snacks and washing his clothes so he didn't give his clothes for the dobi he used to wash his own clothes and save that money over course of many months made that 100 rupees 
and uh, gave it to Swami. And Swami says, this is the precious hundred rupees and he showed people are around like a proud father would show. That is, God looks at the heart. That's why even Jesus in the temple when the old lady used few pens in the temple, she says she gave more than what all these people gave in the coffers. So God looks at the quality, not the quantity. And also whenever you do service, Swami says there are three kinds of service. The tamasic, rajasic and sattvic. Tamasic service is something you don't want left behind, left behind clothes, left behind food, something you want to give, that is tamasic service. What you don't care, what you don't want. Rajasic service is one where you don't want to pump an exhibition. We gave so many thousand people we served, put it in the newspaper, or some people gave money and put it in a big granite, you have that name engraved on the stone. But Swami was joking, some people give few hundred rupees, and then and they had names of the ceiling fan in each blade, they put it. I thought Swami was joking, so we went to a village, and there, in the temple, we have ceiling fans, and really you join on the, each blade of the ceiling fan different names. People put their names. Just This is all Rajasik. And Swami says that will take you nowhere. The real service is Sattvic service. That is why in Taitreya Upanishad is it said Shraddham Deyam, Shriyam Deyam, Hiyam Deyam, Sambhidaya Deyam. How to give? The Upanishad has said when you give, you should give with humility. You should, when you give, you should give in plenty to people. You should give what is good for people. And we should give it with love and compassion. That is the way you should give. Then it becomes a sattvic charity. And as Jesus said, let not your left hand know what your right hand does. Do with humility so that nobody knows. I shared this story before, but I would like to share. There is a wonderful exemplary devotee by name. James Johnson. He comes from the Midwest, close to where? Hari, you know, Detroit area. Huh? Cleveland. Cleveland. He's from Cleveland. So, this man is amazing. So, actually, he was a friend for my wife. She, we never personally saw her. She used to call her on the phone. Mrs. Reddy, whenever we go to Prashant, William, can you send me Bodhi? So, I never met him personally. He's an African American from this wonderful exemplary devotee. He didn't have anything. He was just living a social security. The other devotees used to take him to the, for shopping, helping him for his needs. And um, he didn't even have a car. So during the Swami's uh, the, uh, birthday, when there is the inauguration of the super speciality hospital in 1991, they announced many patrons who contributed significantly millions of dollars. One of the names they heard was James Johnson gave $100,000. People couldn't be, believe the year. Somebody said, is it his name? Somebody said, is his name? They said, yes. We heard the names, people in that region. And then when they went back, they asked him, James Johnson, did you give 100000 He didn't want anybody to know that. So he felt embarrassed that people came to know about this because that is done with so much anonymity and humility. The story goes, because he didn't have any money, people wondered where did he get. So he was serving his sister who was dying of cancer. So when his sister died, she didn't have any heirs. Nobody to, the estate she had was $100,000. So because her brother served her, so she gave the whole $100,000 to her brother. So instead of keeping up. most of what we say, let me give 50 percent, 50 percent you can give for charity. But this man said, this whole thing belongs to God and God is building a hospital for the needy. This is God's money, you should go to God's money. This should go to God. So that is the way, it is the real sacrifice. As an example, so start with charity. Let not your left hand know what your right hand does. Give everything. That is the kind of charity Swami says we should have when you do the service. But when we are doing service, there are certain obstacles come. 
why we cannot be able to do this pure loving service. There are the two greatest obstacles when you want to do service is doership and enjoyership. Khatrutva and Bhogtrutva. I am the doer and I want the results of the actions to myself. That is the greatest obstacle. It happens to lot of us still we need to grow out of this. Because I am the doer, that is the whole problem. So this, this um, one of the vice chancellors of uh, Satsa University, Professor Hanumantapa, he directly related to us in one of the meetings and personally. He was an erudite scholar, he used to give talks in front of Swami. He was he had the gift, he could talk at any topic, any time. And Swami made him talk many times. So once he arranged a conference of the vice chancellors, and then there were vice chancellors, Swami was there, many people talked. But this man, he, he can talk so well, he wanted to speak. He asked Swami, I want Swami, sit down, sit down. So again he said, Swami, I want to talk, sit down, sit down. So then three times he said, again he insisted, Swami says, if you don't listen, Swami says, go, okay. Then he comes to the stage, goes to the mic. <laughs> He, he was speechless, he couldn't speak one word. So he was so fr he was completely speechless. He went back and uh, sat in his seat, almost he was shot. And for three days he couldn't speak. Then Swami, you know, he's a great master. So he comes to the darshan, goes to his wife, Abhi's your husband. <laughs> Swami's man, Swami, he cannot uh, speak. Swami he was smiling. So God can make. They said, Mukam Karoti Vachala. You can make the dumb the eloquent. This is a proof. You can make the eloquent the dumb too. So, to show he is the doer. We always need to remember constantly he is the doer. And another instance I remember this one of the devotees from America. You know, I should correct myself, USA. Because when I used to go to Dominican Republic, other places use America. He says, We are also American, so it's a USA. Latin America also is America, we always forget that. So I said, uh, this USA, they took a group of people for drama. This was in the old days, they had dramas in Purnachandra. So it was enacted beautifully. Everybody liked, Swami was pleased, everybody was happy. So Swami came back next uh, day and told this one who is organizing this drama in the veranda. Oh, it was done very well, beautiful job. Swami, your grace, your blessings. Swami said, who is the uh, director for the play? This man is a good devotee, humble devotee and smart. He said, Swami, you are the director, you are the producer. So Swami was happy, he was happy. He said, he passed the test. Swami said, then what about you, what are you then? He said, Swami, I'm just an assistant. And Swami says, I don't need any assistant. <laughs> Just to show he is the director, producer, actor, instrument. Really that instrumental ego is also an ego. Swami doesn't need anybody thing. Same thing, this possessorship. I am the owner. I have belo this belongs to me. That is an obstacle in spirituality too. So there is also the story I share quite a bit. So this uh, Swami, you know, used to go to many devotees' homes in the old days. And there's this one devotee, he was inviting Swami to his house in Delhi. And Swami, please come to my house. Uh, I pray, I need your grace and blessing. Swami said, uh, your house? Then man realized the mistake. No, Swami, our house, he said. <laughs> oh, our house, 50-50 percent partnership. <laughs> no. Then he said, so no, Swami, your house. And he says, why do you invite me to my house? <laughs> so, with, so with Swami you can never win. All, so all these lessons is to show that he is the owner, he is the producer, he is the actor. We need to constantly remember he is the puppeteer, he is playing the game and we need to go along and be grateful for the opportunities he gives us to serve. Then when we sort of, why should we do service? As I said, service is loving action. So it gives us benefits. What are the benefits of service? First benefit is it gets, 
makes us receive divine grace, divine love. So the Swami tells this beautiful story of Abu Ben Adam. Most of the SSC teachers, you know that. So this Abu Ben Adam, he knows one only to serve. He says there's no time to worship God, do japa, meditation. So one time he was in his room, suddenly he sees the vision. An angel comes and was writing the names of people on the wall. He asks, what are you writing? He says, I am writing the names of the people who love God. So he says, I don't do any puja, worship or anything. My name won't be there. So he says, his name was not there. Then after a few days, again the angel came and she was writing some other names. What are you writing? He says, I am writing the names of the people whom God loves the most. So I won't, I won't worship so why will he love me? But no, no, she says, look there. So his name was in the topmost. Because God loves those people who serve his creation, who serve his brothers and sisters. So really to receive the God's love, that's why Swami says, not that we say we, call, we are his devotees, he should call us, we are his devotees. To receive his grace, we need to do his work. When we do his work, the, what is the thing happens? Purification of the heart. The Lord Krishna says, Chittasya Suddhaye Karmana. The purpose of all service is purification of heart. So the more we do service, it gets rid of our ego and purifies our heart. Why should we pure, have a pure heart? What did Jesus say? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. If we have vision of God, if we have purity, that's all. That's what this one say. Purity is enlightenment. If you are pure, there is no spiritual practices needed at all. The minute we are pure, that minute we are enlightened. The bhajans we sing, the service we do, the meditation we do, everything is only one purpose. Get rid of our impurities to realize who we really are, that is, we are the embodiments of love. So the second benefit this gives is purity of heart. Then how do we know that we really are doing service? Swami said, service should be for transformation. So what really you are doing, service, if you are really progressing, you should have transformation of the heart. So Swami says, if you have no transformation of the heart, you are not progressing. That is why the word in Sanskrit is called Swayam Seva. That means when you are doing a voluntary work, you are serving yourself. Swayam seva. That means you are serving yourself, not somebody else. There is no proper translation in English. We call volunteer. But really, real translation of swayam seva means a one who serves oneself. It doesn't look good. Right English translation, we call volunteer. So really, when we do service, we are serving ourselves for our own spiritual growth, for our own transformation. When we do this, we can have experience of the divine. Another thing, the sign how we are progressing is having this unity. Whenever we do the service project, to do service one to one is very easy. When you work as a team player, when we are working together, we need to do this. Like uh, Phil was talking about eating food here, everything. We need to adjust, adapt, accommodate, develop forbearance. That is a process where the really the unity comes. First the unity comes at the level of thought, word and deed. So what we think, we say, what we say and we do. But ultimately the unity is seeing oneness amongst all. That we are all one in spirit. That is the unity because unity is divinity. These are all profound statements Swami gave. When there is a conference in Rome, they wanted a message. Swami said only four words. Unity is divinity. Purity is enlightenment. So once we are pure, we are enlightened. And the whole purpose is we develop this unity so that we can realize divinity. Then what will happen? Then we will know who really are. So I will end, almost the time is getting close, any time goes on, when you talk about God, it says, Tari Mahima Likhi Na Jaye, Tari Mahima Kahi Na Jaye, there is a beautiful song, you can know end for singing your glories, and know where we can comprehend your glories. 
So I will end with this anecdote. So the Swami, as I said, gives us so many opportunities to serve, so many occasions, and yes, takes care of our uh, temporal needs, our spiritual needs, he guides us, guards us. Really, there is no way we can express gratitude. So I expressed that to Swami one time. Swami, I have a prayer. You do so much to us at the individual level, family, organization. What can I do for you? Can you do this for me? He said. Yes, Swami, anything. So I saw Swami was one to start a unit in the hospital because we were happy Dr. Varda Chari is here, Mrs. Chari, that we started the orthopedic unit and Hari is there. We have started a gastroenterology unit in the hospital, many projects. I thought Swami would tell me another project. I said, Swami, please, what can I do? Can you do this? Yes. What Bernie said, be happy, be happy, be happy. Like what Bernie's echo. So let us all be happy. That's what Swami wants. He says, bliss is my food. So if we are happy, Swami is happy. So this is the opportunity. But one should, should remember, what is happiness? union with God. So usually we think happy is having some good time, pleasure. Really union with God, that means at thought, word and deed level, always we should be in tune with Him. Then only that is real happiness. Otherwise it is a pleasure. Pleasure between uh, pleasure is the interval between two pains. That is not. Real happiness is unalloyed bliss which never gets unperturbed at all. That is the kind of bliss we are looking for. That is what Swami will bless to us if we really uh, crave for that. So I pray to Swami to bless all of us with the strength so that we love Him with our, all our heart, mind, soul and strength and serve Him with humility and love till our last breath. Jai Sai Ram. Thank you.